Hi guys, it's Stefan from SXT Wellness. For those that are new to the channel, I'm qualified in a Bachelor of Nutrition from Deakin University. Today, we're going to talk about the keto diet. What is it? What's it about? Is it good for us? Let's find out. Please make sure you don't forget to like, click the subscribe button and click the notifications button. Let's get started. What is the ketogenic diet or the keto diet? The ketogenic diet focuses on getting energy mainly from fats and proteins while reducing your carbohydrate intake to less than 50 grams a day. What are the foods that the keto diet includes? Well, it could be eggs, cheese, meat, bacon, everybody loves a bit of bacon, seafood, legumes such as pinto beans or kidney beans, nuts, seeds, olive oil, low calorie vegetables such as carrots, broccoli, lettuce, onion, tomatoes, etc. And again, reducing the amount of carbohydrate based foods such as pasta, rice, fruit, and starchy vegetables such as potatoes. How does it work? Well, in order to understand how it works, we need to understand how the body uses energy. Carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are called macronutrients and they provide fuel for the body. Vitamins and minerals are called micronutrients and they form enzymes and cofactors to assist the breakdown, absorption, and transportation of macronutrients around the body. The average energy intake for an adult is 8,700 kilojoules per day. The brain itself uses on average 100 to 200 grams of glucose per day, which equates to around 1,700 to 3,400 kilojoules of energy. However, the keto diet restricts carbohydrate intake to less than 50 grams a day. This means there will be a deficit of glucose to the brain. But there still remains five to 7,000 kilojoules of energy that's required by the rest of the body and the brain for daily energy. So where does the rest of this energy come from? Well, the body then has to break down fat and protein to provide the brain and body with energy. Fats and proteins get broken down into ketone bodies, which are an alternative energy source for the brain and nervous system. Additionally, some proteins can be broken down into glucose. So what happens to our fat and protein and carbohydrate stores while on a keto diet? Carbohydrates such as rice and potatoes are primarily broken down into glucose. Once eaten, glucose is used by the brain and other body cells. Any excess glucose is stored as glycogen. We have enough glycogen stores for around one to two days, depending on the individual. Once glycogen has been depleted, the body then really starts the ketosis process where fats and proteins are the major contributor of glucose and ketones for the brain and the body. So our fat stores are broken down, which you could say is a good thing. Most of us, including myself, I know we want to lose fat. So that's already something you can see there, a bit of a positive. However, as mentioned, the body also breaks down proteins to provide the brain with glucose, as glucose is the brain's preferred fuel source. This is a process known as gluconeogenesis, just means that certain proteins get broken down into amino acids, which can then be used to provide the brain with glucose. So as a summary, the ketogenic diet aims to reduce carbohydrate intake which then utilizes fat and also protein to supply the brain and body with glucose and ketones for daily energy. That gives us a bit of a picture as to what's happening in regards to the body's energy utilization. What are the benefits and negatives of the keto diet? Well, let's head to our screen to go through a few examples. Hi guys, as you can see on this page, we've got some benefits and we've got some negatives. So, one of the first benefits is restricting energy intake can lead to weight loss. So by restricting our carbohydrate intake, we're restricting a macronutrient and we can put our bodies in an energy deficit, therefore it can lead to weight loss. It also reduces our soft drink and lolly intake as these are processed foods which are generally high in sugar. Sugar is a carbohydrate, restricting carbs equals restricting these types of foods. So I'd say that's a positive thing. The next thing is it reduces our fat mass because we are burning fat to supply the body with energy. 
Um, so we're reducing the amount of fat we have. I'd say that's a good thing as well. On the negatives, um, one of the things we have there is muscle wastage as proteins are used to supply the body with glucose. So for any person like myself, maybe you're training, you're going to the gym, you're playing a sport, okay? You, you don't want to be using protein as a way to supply the brain with glucose. You want to be taking in carbohydrates so you can provide the brain with energy and it's basically a sparing process, meaning when you take in or you consume carbohydrates, you spare the breakdown of proteins to a large degree. When you restrict your carbohydrate intake, then the energy's gotta come from somewhere. And it comes from fats, but unfortunately it also comes from proteins. You can also become nausea and have sickness, also known as the keto flu. Not good. The next thing there is fatigue from lower energy intake. Like guys, it's really, it's quite hot in Melbourne at the moment. It's like you know, nearly 30 degrees, I'm breaking up a bit of a sweat here, um, but we're still gonna keep going, so excuse, excuse the, um, the L driplets. Should you do the keto diet? Well, some of my friends, they've done it and they've found success. They've been doing it for quite a few number, number of years, which is, which is great. However, some of my other friends have also tried it and they didn't like it, and they stopped doing it after a few weeks. And so, um, ultimately, if it works for you, then you can try it and you can go ahead with it and do it. If it doesn't work for you, um, then you wouldn't advise doing it. But let's head to our screen and uh, we can show you a quick graph. Um... Okay, let's look at this graph. Well, on the x-axis at the bottom, we have zero to 40 median weeks. On the left, on the y-axis, we have different weight loss strategies. And what this graph basically displays is how long people kept up a specific weight loss strategy for. So if I weigh 100 kilos and I lost 10 kilos, that means I'm at 90 kilos, I would sustain that for 10 weeks or 20 weeks or 30 weeks or 100 weeks. If we look at this graph, we can see that fasting for this particular study it wasn't sustainable. Nobody did it for more than zero weeks, maybe one, two days. It just, it didn't work. Eat less carbohydrates, which is comparable to the ketogenic diet, which is low in carbs. People sustained it for 12 weeks, roughly. And then you can see their low calorie foods, you know, vegetables and nuts, etc. 25 weeks. Increase in exercise, looks 28 weeks or so, they sustained it. And you can see there, Decreasing fat intake, people sustained weight loss for 40 weeks for this particular study. So that's really what this graph shows. And it's just to give an indication that sustainability should be the name of the game. Whatever diet it is, the more sustainable it is, the more likely you are to achieve success, lose weight, and also maintain weight loss. Welcome back, guys. Um, that's it for today. Uh, Stefan from SXT Wellness. Don't forget to click subscribe and also click the notifications button. Um, additionally, if you want to comment, if there's any videos or any type of information you want to know in the future, please let me know and I'll, I'll make the videos for what you want. Um, otherwise, peace.